Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we're talking about curves. Uh, I posted a video last week. I was working out a look for a certain abstract, and one of the adjustments was curves. I got a few questions about that, and so I thought I'd put together this video, which is uh, not an explanation of curves top to bottom. I have separate videos on that. I'll put links in the show notes for this one that will point you to those. But uh, just a few quick recipes that you can do with curves to start to get yourself familiar with them, and then you can explore them because curves are very, very powerful for everything from controlling light and shadow to uh, to color grading to you know to really fine tuning and tweaking color balance, a lot you can do with curves. Uh, it just takes a little bit getting used to. So this video will do uh, five recipes with, uh, with curves. And really any tool you're using that has curves. I'll be using Lightroom in this video, but if you're using On One Photo, you've got curves. If you're using Luminar, you've got curves. Photoshop, you've got curves. Just about every tool has curves. They work the same way. Uh, you know, Each tool will have maybe a slight variation how they present the curve, but the fundamentals are the same and these recipes will work. Whatever package you're using, you got curves, you can use this stuff. So let's dive into it. Quick, quick intro to a curve tool. This is Lightroom. Layout is similar in On One, Skylum, Photoshop. You have pure black in the lower left. You have pure white in the upper right and you can choose points anywhere along the curve to change what is considered shadow or highlight and you know, raise things, lower things. Just about every curves tool has a few built-ins. Like here, we'll see medium contrast, and you'll see that the shadows are darker, the highlights are a little brighter, and you see the effect on the photo you know, before and after it does this kind of contrast. That's the classic S curve. So uh, that's the fundamentals of curves. And you have color curves as well, where you do the same types of things, but you're playing one color against another. We'll see examples of that in these recipes that we're going to go through here. But let's get to the first recipe, uh, a matte look. Now, a matte look, it takes the deepest shadows and makes them more like a charcoal gray and takes the brightest highlights and makes them, you know, a little off-white. You do that with a curve by taking your pure black point and just pushing it upwards. And I'll push it up very far so you can see how this starts to wash things out, right? Anything pure black is just kind of becoming a, a charcoal gray, a little faded. And then the same idea for the highlights, pull those down. And you're really squeezing the histogram. If you're watching the histogram, you're seeing it squeeze in. I don't have pure black and pure white anymore. And you can still do adjustments within that. You know, you could still do some type of contrast within your matte look, but that pure black and pure white point is what's creating this matte faded look. And this can be useful for certain stylistic portraits or you're looking for um, vintage kind of feels, things like that where the photo's been faded. It's, it has it has its uh, place in photography for certain stylized looks. The second recipe kind of builds on the idea of a matte, and that's why I wanted to show you this one first. And this is for adding some additional atmosphere into a photo to accentuate certain parts of the scene. Like in this one, we have some fog and atmosphere. So let's reset this curve. And I liked what happened when I do this raising doing that matte look. Notice that the fog in between the hills, that's getting accentuated, but I'm losing the shadows. So instead, what we can do is just take a point in the low shadows and raise that up some, and I'm getting that atmosphere look and a different point that kind of pulls that back down into the shadow area. Now this is um, this gets into a technique uh, I describe them as anchor points. You you pick a couple of points that you don't want to move on the curve, and then you have a little more control here. So uh, we'll do this atmosphere one again, but thinking in terms of locking down certain tones. Like I don't want the shadows to move, so I just dropped a point there. My input and output are exactly the same, so no change, and like maybe this far up the curve here so that these points become the pivots and I'll usually double down on them. And the doubling down, I have a pair here, a pair here. That means when I adjust this in the middle, the rest of the curve does not change very much. And so now I can really accentuate that atmosphere to my liking without 
messing up the other tones in the scene. So an atmosphere boost, if you're looking to take a segment of a photo like a landscape here that's got this fog or anything really with a, you know, a middle-ish gray, do something like this. A couple of anchor points on either side and then adjust the range that you like. Uh, you get a before and after. And for this scene, you know, I, I like that that boost of the, the mood and the fogginess here. So uh, that's recipe number two, playing around with atmosphere. Recipe number three. Um, this one will be kind of fun. It's, uh, it's color grading. You can do quite a bit of color grading using curves. And I do like the way that Lightroom presents curves for this illustration. But again, you can do this in any tool that has curves because you'll have color curves, red, green, and blue. And I'll explain how they work and how you can use them for color grading. We'll go ahead and keep the matte look in there. But notice we have also red, green, and blue curves. And why I like the way Lightroom lays this out is you get an indication. You have actually red in the upper part of the curve and you know, cyan in the lower part. You've got green in the upper part of the green curve and magenta in the lower part. And for blue, it's blue in the upper and yellow in the lower. And as you raise and lower the curve, you're really either adding blue or removing blue in this example. And by removing blue, I'm adding yellow. Like if I take this and I bring it way down, I get a whole lot of yellow. This way I get a whole lot of blue. This opens up quite a bit of opportunity here. And so for, um, for this scene, perhaps I want to have a little more of a blue tone in the highlights. And so I can push the blue tone there and then control the curve so that I'm just adding a little extra blue here, but I'm not really doing anything else here. I might do something similar with um, cyan, where in this case I'll pull down to add add cyan, take away red from that same area, and then push it back in. So I'm adding more of a bluish cast to this scene, which you know for this photo it kind of uh, it kind of you know um, it suits itself. And so this is the matte look plus that little bit of color grading. You know, the, the, the mood just changes. Certainly the, the, the matte look is much more uh, predominant, but you get the notion here where the curves can be a, a level of color grading like that you, you can't get simply with, say, your temperature slider. If we're looking at the, the, the blue curve where you've got cool and warm, in a temperature slider, you know, all you have is cool and warm, and it's global, and it just pushes everything around. But in a tone curve, you can warm the shadows. Right? I can pull this and warm the shadows some, but I'm not doing that to the highlights. I'm cooling the highlights, and I'm not having to go in and do masking and things like that. For simple things like this, it can be helpful to turn to a curve and just do these little tweaks here for color grading. So uh, that's kind of you know recipe number three. I like to use it for warm cool, but you can do it with any types of color grading. Recipe number four is a high key look. I like this for my black and whites where you've got a very uh, bright, airy, white portion of the photo, but the shadows stay quite dark. You know, high key, have a high, high contrast scene. Now, uh, high key is, is pretty easy to do with a curve. You just kind of grab something. I usually grab in the upper mid-tones and just pull upwards, right? And you get this very brightened in this scene, like, you know, they're through the, you know, the, the eye sockets of this, uh, this sculpture, and I get this nice brightness here. And it really does make, you know, I think a marked difference in the photo. And this is not as easily achieved by using, say, the highlight sliders or shadow sliders or blacks or whites because those do not give you as much control over exactly where are you pulling things. Yeah, yes, these, these things, these tones, like exposure, you can see it affects the, the, the middle part of the histogram or the highlights is at the upper, upper mid-tones, the whites are at the top. And so you have some flexibility there, but the tone curve gives you more. And I mentioned in a previous recipe using these things I like to refer to as anchor points. Like for this, I don't want the shadows to change at all. So I'll drop a couple of points there to really lock down the shadows. And then I can do my high key look and notice how it's like really just the eyes that are brightening up, right? And I think that is um, a wonderful 
feature of curves, setting a few points to really lock in a segment of the curve. And then for a high key look, just, you know, this is a pretty aggressive curve if you've worked with curves before. This is, this is a lot, but it works for the photo before and after. So this is a favorite recipe of mine for a high key look. A couple of points to lock down the shadows and then grab something in the upper mid-tones and pull that up on your luminance curve and you get this very nice contrast boost. Beautiful for black and whites. For our fifth and final recipe, let me turn back to color and I'll call this one the twilight look. And I've got a photo here. It's taken at the end of the day. It's, it's nice. I, I like the photo. Good color, pleasing color. But, uh, what if there was a little more color action going on or if this was past the bookend of the day? You're, you're, the sun has set. You're into that twilight region. And I'm a sucker for this look. I, admittedly, I like this uh, at the end of the day where things get a little more purpley bluish than they are you know, golden. And that is, uh, it's really easy to do in curves and I'll, I'll do it a lot. It involves adjustments in each one of the channels, red, green, and blue. We'll start with red. Uh, first thing I'm looking at is just where are the tones in the image. Most of them are here, so I'll take a point and ever so slightly nudge up just a little bit. Notice that that delta is very small. Input is like what the, what the point would be if I had no adjustment whatsoever. Output is what am I changing it to. I'm adding a little bit of red, you know, three points. Not that the, the numbers don't matter so much, but just a small adjustment. Uh, with green, I'll do the reverse. Somewhere in the same area, it doesn't have to be the exact same point, and I'll pull down a little bit. What am I doing? I'm removing green and adding magenta, right? I'm pulling the curve in this direction toward magenta. And then for blue, we're back to, we're moving away from warmer tones, so this one up into blue and less yellow. And then before that change, after that change. These small little adjustments, red and blue go up, green goes down, and you get this really nice twilight look. So uh, that's it. That's going to conclude the video. There you go, five uh, recipes that will help you get used to using curves. And once you start to get comfortable with curves, you'll still use them. Even in our world of being able to mask objects and do luminosity masks and you know, all the things that we have at our disposal, and I use those too, but curves are still useful and uh, they can really accentuate your photo and these little tiny tweaks that you make to curves. Less is often more, but you'll really like the results. Hope you found the video useful. If you do have questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.